viewing pleasure all this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I still want to go watch that. And, you know, our good friend is on the line now, and I want to ask him about this show because I'm sure he'll have something funny to say about it. Let's welcome back to Totally Driven Radio our good friend, one of the stars of Solomon and Son, Mr. Roy Wood Jr. Roy, how the hell and have I'm you been? I'm back like I never left, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> how the hell you been, gentlemen? <laughs> I told uh, you on the radio with an, ex- with an expletive out the gate. Do I'm it. A gentleman. I love it. There you go. So Now, what we're, show we're are t- we talking about? I Want to Marry Harry. I don't know that show. Oh, come on, come on. Just the rest of America. <laughs> I mean, that's, why they, that's why they canceled it. I think I was the only person watching it. They found a guy who looks just like uh, Prince Harry, Princess Diana's youngest son. Okay. I mean, this guy was a complete twin. And they. they now, flew. Prince Harry's the moron. Which one? Or is that Prince William? They're both kind of douchey. Well, Pr- Prince Harry is the one. Where he, I think he would have like swastikas on on at a party in Vegas or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, they got this big ass castle in England. They flew over twelve American whacked out batshit crazy girls and flew them over to England, and they instantly I love they it. made them believe that it was Prince Harry. I well, love it, it all. Show, uh, it, I'm telling you. It was TV gold. The show lasted three weeks. So it was basically like weeks. Joe Millionaire, only it was right. like Joe Prince or something. Exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. I mean, they had like Secret Service stuff. Like they would plan and like they're rushing them out of the castle or they're on a boat fly- going down the river. And they have all these planet girls like on the bridge that they're going under like, Harry, we love you. And they're snapping pictures. And, I mean, they really worked these girls over good. So Okay. Well, I- but now they pulled it off TV. They pulled it, and you have to watch the rest of the episodes online. So I'm trying to find time to watch the rest of the episodes. What network did this originally air on? Fox. Yeah, that sounds like a Fox show. <laughs> we were supposed to, and I had just, I was so disappointed, too. I had hooked it up. We were going to start having all the girls on one by one and the prince, and literally it got pulled it was two Thursdays ago. Fox pulls it. In the evening, they make this big announcement, and then I get the email from Fox an hour before we go in the air pulling the interview. I'm like, you're killing me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, you could always Facebook those chicks, right? And just talk to them direct. You don't need that, Fox to the joke. Unless they put them on gag orders or something. I think they did, because that's what I did. Right. I, well, it's I, like a week. You could go see them at Cheetah's, too, so it'll be fine. <laughs> right. Uh, How would so, she feel to be that chick that talks shit to everybody in her front home? I'm going to marry a prince. Fuck yep. you guys. <laughs> and that's what's going on. They had one girl. They did this one thing where the, the prince was take. He took two girls out on a date. And they went to, like, dinner. They went horseback riding. And then they went okay. to, like, the barn. And they sat a little, like, picnic set up and they're sitting there having drinks and talking meanwhile the other girls are back at the castle and they had to scoop shit in the barn they made them clean the horse shit up in the barn (laughs) and this one girl she's on her hands and knees picking up horse shit with her hands so she can impress the prince i'm dead serious (laughs) she was so convinced that this was the prince i mean she was on her hands and knees shoveling shit with her hands, not even using a shovel. I want to become a prince, man. <laughs> it's like at that moment, that's when you realize that there's just people out there that will do anything for money. and will. Yep. Pro- it's like the whole Donald Sterling D. Stiviano thing. Donald Sterling essentially shitted on her race in front of her. Front of her. And, and she was cool with it. <laughs> she was basically like, look, I hate those people. Why are you coming around with them people? Uh, would you like for me to make you a sandwich? Like, no, wait a minute. <laughs> you, you got a black parent, sweetheart. Have some self-esteem about yourself. Now, when something like that happens with the whole the Donald Sterling thing, 
Now, I know going back to uh, when you guys came to Philly last year, you know, we had that whole incident with the the guy from the Eagles, Riley uh, Cooper. And that was Riley part Cooper. of your, Yeah, that was part of your act, the whole thing where he dropped the end bomb at a country concert or something. Now, when well, something like that happened... Timmy Chesney, yeah. Y- yeah, yeah. Now, when something like this Donald Sterling thing happens, do you just kind of like, all right, <laughs> do you just go into full writing mode and just write a whole log of jokes? Actually, I'm the opposite. When something that galvanizing in the public sphere happens, I fall back from writing, and I wait to see what everyone else writes and then try to come with my own unique perspective once I've seen what what other comedians are going to do on the topic. Right. Um, you know, so like while I, I all the other – I can't be too broad with my references and the punchlines and all of that stuff. So, you know, I had a couple of jokes about it, but I ended up just leaving it alone as a whole. It's not something that made it in my, into my act in a permanent capacity. Well, how about, like, with, with the with the Riley Cooper thing? Like, you, I mean, you had a lot of jokes based around that and other stuff for Philadelphia. So when you guys are out doing this tour and you're going town to town, do you sit in, like, get jokes prepared for each city and then have your normal act on top of it? Um, The first thing I do when I get to a city, I read the local paper and I try to see what's going on in town just to see what everyone is abuzz about and see if that burrito is into something that I'm already touching on in my act. Right. And, you know, and sometimes I can take something and turn it into something a little bit more, you know, so it, it just, it all, it just, it varies. Yeah, I'll tell you, I mean, you guys, the, the whole, all four of you last year at that show, hysterical. I can't rant and rave enough about how funny all four of you guys were. Yeah, we and appreciate I, it. And I want you to know, too, every time now, either uh, I'm with my wife and she goes to buy a handbag, either I will make the joke or she will make the joke that, look, it's big enough, Roy would approve. Yeah, that's it. It's got to be big <laughs> enough to sneak food in. <laughs> if it's not big enough to sneak in food, then it's strictly for girls' night out. It's strictly for girls' night out. That's uh, it, man. But yeah, I'll like, give you a good example of some stuff that, like, with the whole Miami Dolphins N word thing, um, like that type of stuff, um, I was able to figure out a way to take a current event and put it into something that, for me, fits my perspectives and opinions. In right. the longer term in my act, because I don't like talking about current events in my act because they all have an expiration date, which means you have to keep right. going back to the field. You, you have to keep going back to the tree to pick new fruit. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, and I'd rather have stuff that's a little bit more developed that I can do at least and grow it over the course of the year. Cool. Very cool. And you guys are getting ready to – or you already started the tour, actually. Oh, yeah, man. The tour started last week in New York and uh, Minneapolis, and uh, we'll be back in Philly um, July 19th. At the Troc. I believe it's, it's, it's the Trocadero. Trocadero? How do you pronounce it? The Trocadero. That? Yeah, it's in Chinatown. The Trocadero. Okay. Uh, how far is that from South Street? Because I need a slice of Lorenzo's pizza when I come to Philly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like five minutes. It's not far at all. Five minutes driving. Not walking. I, and I, I know you think I'm joking when I say this, but I promise you, I mean this. Lorenzo's Pizza will cater my wedding. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. I'll tell you That's what. Hey, you didn't get none last time, did you? Or you went down during the day? And no, got you know what? I I went down during the day because those ass clowns. Uh, didn't want to do anything. And by the time we got done in Philly, we had to get on the road to go to Pittsburgh. And right. th- like they act like when it's time for when, when the show ends and we have a road trip to do, like when we do a night drive after our show, they act like we're a firefighter who just got a call of three kids trapped on the freeway and they're sparked by the gas tank. We bitch, calm down. <laughs> we're going to get on the turnpike and sit still for five hours. <laughs> so how about you let me get my slice of pizza? So I had to do it during a time where where no one else wanted anything. 
Yeah, because I, I mean, that's what you, after the show last year, I mean, you guys did the meet and greet afterwards, and then next thing you know, you're out front and you're packing up the SUV, and you guys were out. <laughs> I was like, wow, no yeah, surrenders literally. for them guys. We, we literally were gone, yeah. We check out of the hotel on the way to the venue. Wow. Like that, that's so always how, how come you guys went, are coming to the truck this time, do you know, or? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if there was an issue with the routing coming through Pittsburgh and whether or not the venue that we played last year. We played, uh, is it FAFSA or? Uh, the TLA. Yeah, TLA. Um, right there on the, what, South and 2nd Street, I think. It might have been an issue of scheduling. They may have already had something scheduled there, so they had to change venues so that it routes well with the gotcha. geography of the tour. So, you know, you know, you never know, man. That's more of a Steve Byrne question. I'm just a private in this army. <laughs> the truck's actually a bigger uh, a bigger uh, venue, too. Oh, I mean, kick ass. I mean, we're definitely bound to have a better time. It's an old, um, but, believe know. it or not, it's an old vaudeville theater. That was, It's, like, from the early 1900s. And uh, I think it used to be, like, a, a burlesque club, I should say, back in, like, the early – Part of the the 1900s. Oh, see, that's good stuff. That that yeah. means that it's a lot of nicking crannies and weird places. Yeah, it's it's a cool little. It's not even little. It's I mean it's big. It's it's a nice size place, nice size venue. It's definitely bigger than the TLA. We'll see. And the that's stage is up high. The stage is like easy four feet off the ground, if not a taller. So, That's but, definitely good stuff. But uh, the big thing is, Sullivan and Son, you guys are back. Yeah, man, we're back, season three, man. And you know what? I'm definitely happy to be back in the game. I'm, I'm happy definitely you guys are back. happy to be back in the game. You know, it's it's been a fun year so far, a lot of cool guest stars. Um, you know, we have Billy Gardell is back, Ken Jong is back. Uh the one thing I'm really happy about, uh, Loretta Devine will be playing my mother okay. <laughs> on the show. The great Loretta Devine. Oh, uh, that should be funny. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm excited in ways that you didn't even know. So it's, it's <laughs> definitely been a cool situation. Wait, that sounded a little perverted. Didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> didn't mean it like that. Yeah, so the big kickoff was the other night, this past Tuesday, which you guys switched to Tuesday nights. Yeah, you know what? And I don't know why that was, um, but I would imagine that there's some degree of um, – I would imagine there's some degree of um, wanting to move us to another night because maybe if we were already a strong show and established on Thursdays, you kind of want right. to move a strong show – to another night that you're trying to build up. And that's how a lot of these, um, I think that's how a lot of these execs think. You know, I wouldn't know how all of them think, because if I did, I'd have a show by now. (laughs) Now, is it going to be um, an hour each week with two episodes, or one new episode, one old? That was just an opening night kickoff thing. That was just something we were doing for the opening night, just to make sure the fans caught back on track with the show, because whatever for whatever reason with the scheduling, Turner decided not to have um, a marathon like they did the last two years with our show. Okay. So I guess this year they want to make sure the fans, as they say in the dope game, got their hit. (laughs) (laughs) That is a horrible analogy. Yeah, it it, kind of was. Yeah, that was a terrible, terrible analogy. You know it was. Don't laugh at that darn shit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, really it's, it's, it's definitely a blessing to be back, man. And Vince Vaughn is still on set handling things, and you know he's definitely calling a lot of the shots. He's not an absentee boss who just puts his name on something and then doesn't show up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because I think people forget. I, I mean, I even forgot until I was going back through and reading some stuff. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Vince Vaughn's involved in this whole thing. Oh, yeah, man. Peter Billingsley. Um, a lot of people might know as Ralphie from The Christmas Story. Um, right. He's doing his thing as well. That's awesome. And you guys get such great support, too, from TBS. 
you know what has been really cool about this network is how hands-off they've been with our show. Because, you know, a lot of networks, uh, they, they have a tendency to, I believe, over-police the show. And they're in there on their own set and telling you, don't do this, don't say that, you can't do this. And on that joke, don't touch your crotch. You can say it, say the punchline, then touch your crotch. But don't touch your crotch while saying the punchline. And this is all of this micromanagement. CBS probably gives us almost as much freedom as FX gives Louis C.K. Wow. Almost. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's the one thing. I mean, you guys really do get to push that envelope each week. And a lot, I mean, there's stuff, I mean, you guys will say or, or do, and it's just like, it's like a cringe. Like, you're still thinking to yourself, like, you're watching it on, like, a normal like like a, like a major channel like an ABC or something, but you're not. But it's still like you're cringing. I know I do at least. I'm like, oh, they yeah. Just said I got that. a couple of tweets last night. Um, I didn't know this, but standards and practices allows you to say shit two times in a 30 minute program on broadcast cable after uh, 10 p.m. Okay. And I got a couple of tweets last night from people going, "Wow, I didn't know you could say shit." Yeah. And, I think the fact that it's just a naughty word or something gives people a little more of a giggle factor, and I think it helps because if the show is to reflect real life, let's be real about it. People say shit all the time. Right. Yeah, that's a good thing, too, is that that 10 o'clock, like the other guest we had on earlier – He's in that new show on uh, TNT, uh, Murder in the First. It's a cop show. Yeah, Murder in the First, yeah. They they said uh, blowjob killer, and I was like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I could, yeah, I couldn't believe they said that. So, but it's that that ten o'clock hour you can get away with that little a bit extra. It's definitely an edge to the programming that time of night, and it's funny considering that we're coming from an era where you know ten fifteen years ago people were all in a bunch because Dennis Ryan showed his bare ass on NYPD right. Blue. Right, right. And, and you know what too Like I always refer to you guys Like with that Saying like you guys Do push that envelope And I and I get Like shocked at times Like that you get away with it And I and not, I, I shouldn't say Yeah I guess shocked But excited as well And there was a show On Fox uh, This past season Dads That I felt the same way With a lot of the stuff That they would uh, Do each week And I would always refer Back to you guys I'm like they're doing this stuff on Fox, and it reminds me of Sullivan and Son because it, it gives me that same cringe factor each week. But yet, this pay, they got canceled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely a different degree of judgment on network television and cable. And, you know, Seth MacFarlane and his brand of humor, if you've seen Ted or 100 Ways to Die in the West, and just some of the jokes we get played with on Family Guy, a lot of that stuff theatrically it works, and it's animated. It works better in a sitcom format. Um, you know, maybe the execs just, you know, didn't desire, just didn't want that style of comedy. Right. You know, and that's You're unfortunate because right. I think Seth MacFarlane is an effing genius with the way he can take a joke. Like, like no one can tell me it's not funny on Family Guy. Well, they'll take a line and repeat it four times, and it's and it's funny. They'll repeat it 12 more times, and it's not funny. And by the time the character repeats it the 20th time, it's drop-dead hilarious. It's like you're on a comedy roller coaster. That's just amazing. Oh. But, yeah, it's, it's cool to be a part of something where they push the envelope, and we're on a network that gives us a little bit of space to create and be a little edgy. And, you know, it's, it's weird we're on tape nights where – the execs will be in the room, and you know they'll they'll say a couple of things and give us notes when we tape in front of the studio audience. And I go, oh, we're not sure if that joke will work, but they give us the opportunity to go out and do it in front of a live audience. And if it crushes, there's nothing the exec can say to that. But damn, I guess we were wrong. No need to recut that scene. Right. Now, would they make you like like you were saying earlier? Like some networks would uh, make you like you can't touch. The, this body part when you're saying this line or whatever, what would happen if, say, you guys filmed a scene like that and it got through and then the network watched it and say, 
no, you can't do that. Would they cut it out, make you go back and reshoot one scene, or it's it, it, it costs a lot of money to reshoot a scene. So you generally won't reshoot a scene because of one joke. You reshoot a you reshoot a scene if there's a change in the arc of the story. So if they like, you don't change the joke, but well. We want to shoot a different ending where they get back together instead of they break up. Okay, well, let's reshoot that because you're changing everything. But if it's a joke that they don't like, then it just gets dumped, just gets cut. That's it. They're not going to reshoot everything for one joke. And sometimes a joke will slip by again, and it's funny. And then two or three things happen, and it's not funny anymore. You know, we had we had a joke in there a couple of years ago. I can't remember what the what the national tragedy was, but the joke was a little too close. So when we let's just say for let's just say it was a train crash. I, I don't think that's what it was, but let's say in March we shot an episode about a train crash or someone died on a train. It's a train crash joke. Okay. When the episode is supposed to air in June, an actual train crashes and people die. Well, you're not going to reshoot that whole thing, train crash joke. Gotcha. So when the episode airs, you see no reference to the train crash job. Gotcha. So now also too this year. Uh, this year too, you guys got more episodes. You went from doing ten episodes of the first two seasons to now thirteen. Well, exactly. I think that's a testament to CBS and everything that to them showing confidence in the show and its ability. Uh, to draw an audience and be able to, you know, entertain them. Right. Because you don't ask for more of something unless you actually want it. Because it's <laughs> right. costing them money. they got to pay for it. So they're not doing it to be cordial. So for them to take us from 10 episodes to 13 episodes, definitely a testament to the writers and everybody else, and them showing some confidence in it. Because, you know, we were blessed enough the last two years to pull some really good rates and, you know, back in the day on Thursday night, we were up against some really stiff competition. We went against first year in 20, um, 2012, I think. We went, we were pretty much on the first two or three weeks with the Olympics. And then last year, the conference finals and the NBA finals kept playing games on Thursday night for four or five weeks straight. And we still drew an audience. So... It says a lot about the fans of the show and the people who support it. So, you know, I think TBS saw that. They knew this year by staggering when the show started in the summer, you could avoid a lot of the competition unless you're a diehard soccer fan. But, I mean, the World Cup is only a week or two. Uh, for the most part, we're not up against anything. Not, not globally galvanizing events. The NBA Finals were over with before our premiere even started. Well, now you're up against Heroes of Cosplay. Ah, that we're up against. I thought we were up against <laughs> a tyrant on FX. <laughs> <laughs> that was my totally Tuesday night viewing. Comedy. That was my so Tuesday night viewing with my daughter. Drama like that. Yeah, have you seen that clip on YouTube where someone took – they took clips of Breaking Bad and put laugh tracks under it to make Breaking Bad a sitcom? And it's no. Like, Fucking hilarious! They, they, like any scene where they, he falls or slips or somebody makes a weird facial expression, they just put a laugh track under it, and it's corny music to make it look like a TV show is coming on, like Breaking Bad for comedy. You know what? It's, I've it's, never it's watched one episode stuff. of Breaking Bad. Oh, dude! Break, uh, well, you know what? I'm not gonna be one of those people. Neil Brennan has a joke about that house. When, when you tell someone you haven't watched a TV show, they act like you cursed their child. <laughs> what? You haven't watched it? Are you crazy? It's a good show. Get to it when you get to it. If not, the world keeps spinning. Absolutely. You'll be all right. One way or the Absolutely. other. But The Wire, on the other hand, you got to watch or else I'll never do your show again. The Wire? <laughs> oh, yeah. The Wire is probably the best written show. So it's neck and neck with Breaking Bad. So... I'm curious to see how Sons of Anarchy ends, and maybe that can enter the BCS conversation as well. And you know what? That's another one I've never watched. I, I refuse to watch Sons of Anarchy. You refuse to watch Sons of Anarchy? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please expand. I have a brother-in-law who thinks he's a son of anarchy, and it just turns my stomach. Like, so. Oh, gotcha. So it's a family thing. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes sense. All right, I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. You know, you, you watch the show, yeah. and, he, and all of a sudden he thinks he's one of them guys, and yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like when I watched Major League 2, and I thought I was going to get drafted by the Cubs. That was the same. <laughs> gotcha. Who, who are you, Willie Mays Hayes? Oh, absolutely. You know I'm Willie Mays Hayes, even though I weigh as much as three Willie Mays Hayes. Or, uh, I'm not or, fast uh, in the least. <laughs> I definitely wasn't Rick Wild Thing Vaughn. Come on. You're not winning? No. No, I have no arms, sir. <laughs> no arms. That's why I played first base. Uh, mm, 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 good deal, mm, mm. man. Good deal, good deal. Well I, well, I appreciate you guys for having me, man, as always. always man. And um, when I get to Philly this time, it's a Saturday show, so we'll have some time to kick back. We don't have a road trip the next day. I think we're uh, catching a flight on Sunday. So cool. we'll actually have some time to grab a drink at one of these bars somewhere on South Street. I've never been in Chinatown in Philadelphia. You know what? Uh yeah, I, I mean, it, it's literally Chinatown. You know what? Never mind. That sound you just made from your throat tells me that you just need to go to South Street. Yeah, I, I, I can't really tell you much about Chinatown. Are you saying that Asians don't get the party started, sir? Have you ever heard anybody say, hey, guys, let's go to Chinatown? This is true. I've never heard anyone say, let's go to Chinatown. I get it's you know the 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 thought of it like kind of scares me because you hear the horror stories of Chinese restaurants and all and it's you know <laughs> especially at night when you can't see the truth of what's going on who knows so it's it's a scary thing so I usually I'll go to the truck or the convention centers right up the street I was just there the other day for Comic Con um, and then I get out good time sir good time. But I'll gladly go to Fat Tuesdays, yes. All right. Dow Street. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll end by ear. You got the email address. I got the email. I'm not hard to find. I know. I got your number and all. I'm not hard to find. I'm looking at I'm looking over your dates, too. I'm looking at your dates, and I'm like, how is it you guys are doing, like, three, four nights in one place, like, this weekend? Were you in Irvine, California, at the Irvine yeah, Improv? Yeah, but yeah, Irvine's out in Orange County, so that's a commuter show. We're not even getting a hotel for that one. So we'll just go back and forth every day. It's about an hour and a half for traffic. So, You're doing five yeah, shows there. Yeah, man, two Friday, two Saturday, one Sunday. Wow. So that's we'll pretty go back and forth. That's pretty you intense. Know, and the same thing with Phoenix. Uh, we'll be doing a whole weekend in Arizona. Um, I think Chicago's a weekend run, three days. Uh, Minneapolis was a weekend run this past week. Well, see, my co-host, he's out there in Phoenix. So, Nick, you got to go see him. Yeah, man, definitely. All right. Well, I'll be out there, Nick. I'll be inside, yeah. though, in Arizona yeah. in July. <laughs> yeah, you guys couldn't have picked a uh, warmer time to come. I, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's like 118 degrees in July, man. Exactly. That's, oh, that's what I want to go at. Weather. That is not fat guy yeah. weather. I would just mm. advertise air conditioning if I owned a business in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. But, all right, Roy, well, thank you so much. And uh, All right, man. Where can everybody find you? Let's plug all your stuff so make hey. sure everybody follows you and finds you and all the info for everything. I'm as easy as it comes, man. Roy Wood Jr., no S on the wood. That's everything. At whatever the fuck you use, <laughs> I'm there. Roy Wood Jr., and that's also the dot com. Nice. And if you can at just Instagram, cut it. Instagram, at Twitter, all that. Are you doing Instagram, too? Yeah, I do Instagram. I'm, it's growing on me. I was a, I rebelled against it for the longest, but now I actually don't mind it. Are you Instagram and food? I don't a lot of selfies or anything like that. I'm not here. Are you Instagramming food? No, nah, I don't Instagram food. It's just some more weird stuff I see, promote the show, funny, just funny observations. And every now and then I'll throw up a picture of myself, but it's got to, it has to be justified. It's not just 
here's what I look like today. Same as <laughs> yesterday. Don't I look the same? Like, there has to be something. This isn't a word. There has to be something. The numerical content of the picture has to be high. Very nice. <laughs> Is that a word? I don't know. Numerical? The numerical quotient. Quotient. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You deal with notes. But uh, real quick, Dale, before I let you go, if you could just cut a quick ID for me. Uh, this is Roy Wood okay. of Solomon okay. & Son, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. All right. Ready? Yeah. Go for it. Three, two. Hey, it's comedian Roy Wood Jr. from Sullivan & Son on CBS. You are listening to Totally Driven Radio, bastard. <laughs> Sorry, I had to add awesome. an insult. I don't know this is my insult. Wasn't that good. That's all right. We can always use a good insult. <laughs> all right. Hi, Roy. Deal, man. But yeah, when I get to Philly, uh, just hit me up. I'll lock down a pair of tickets, whatever. Cool. Sounds like a plan. All right. Talk to you all later, right, man. man. Take care. Thanks again. Yeah. Peace. Peace. All right. There he goes. Roy Wood Jr., Sullivan and Son. Check it out Tuesday nights, 10 o'clock on TBS. So, you know what? I, I got to ask you, man. Like, what, what's your what, what's your hate thing with Instagram here, dude? <laughs> Honestly, it's a chore. Yeah, that's – I find it's my most neglected page because you're right. It is a chore because you have to go – with Facebook and Twitter, they sort of go hand in hand, but it's this whole other task when it's Instagram. I mean, they do kind of make it easy. I mean, it's the whole world of the hashtag and all that, and I get that. And they do make it easy because they just have the, the hashtag sign there up front. You don't have to search for it on your phone. Um, and it'll it'll keep in memory, like, the common hashtags that you use, which makes things right. a little easier. Right. But 